Hey, this is Dr. Garrett Harper. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about recovery after a tummy tuck. We call it an abdominoplasty. Basically, a tummy tuck has two components. One is to fix the muscular component to your abdomen. Um, oftentimes, after pregnancies, your muscles are fine. They work great. They're just not lined up like they were prior to your pregnancy. There's a little strip of connective tissue that keeps your six-pack muscles in midline and aligned kind of from north to south. And as that stretches, it allows your abdomen to bulge. So you might not realize that only when you're not purposefully flexing your muscles might you kind of see in the mirror, oh, it looks like I'm bloated or it looks like I'm still pregnant. Oftentimes we'll walk around and we'll try to suck in and try and give as pretty of a tummy as we can when we're in our bathing suits. And it's not until you really let it go that you can appreciate that your muscles have been separated. If that's what's going on, you really want to bring those muscles back together. There's no reason to just address excess skin or fat from an abdomen if you're just going to redrape those tissues over the wrong shape. So what we'd like to do is an internal corset stitch that brings your muscles back to being aligned correctly. That internal corset stitch is going to be what makes recovery a little more difficult. Now, we will use a local anesthetic in your abdominal wall that will provide at least 72 hours of some comfort and some relief from the tension that you'll feel in your midline. Patients ask, what's it gonna feel like? Is it like my C-section? It's nothing like your C-section. This is not a muscle splitting procedure. It's a muscle bring back together procedure. And what that feels like is like you just did a thousand sit-ups. So you're gonna feel sore. Your muscles are gonna be tight. They may be firing off and that's why a muscle relaxant can really help you in your post-operative recovery. Sometimes the muscle relaxant does better than the pain pill does. So I'd much rather you try muscle relaxants and extra strength Tylenol to kind of get you over the hurdle of post-operative recovery. With tummy tucks, we use drains. I've tried drainless tummy tucks. I just don't think they ultimately provide the best look and the best result for my patients. For the first two weeks, which is how long your drains could potentially be in, those drains are not interfering with your social life. No matter if you do a drainless tummy tuck or a tummy tuck that uses drains, I don't anticipate you going out ballroom dancing in the first two weeks anyways. So you're gonna wear an abdominal binder and I wanna make sure that that abdominal binder has padding underneath it. These abdominal binders are made with kind of universal measurements and depending upon how tight you wear it or the shape of your body, if you have a more squared off shape or a, a more hourglass, it's gonna fit differently on your body and can rub into areas, especially as your body swells after surgery. So it's important to take a look at your skin and your abdominal flap after surgery underneath the binder to make sure it's not rubbing and causing blisters or other problems. Now, a couple of ways to address that is to wear either a camisole or a tank top or a t-shirt underneath that. And we also provide foam padding for those binders. In any event, the most important thing is for you to be vigilant about looking at your operative sites and making sure everything looks normal, looks good, and if you have any questions, call us. The worst thing is to come back at your one-week appointment and say, I never looked down, I kept my binder on the whole time, you'll be so proud of me. And then once we open it up, there are issues with blisters or the binder rubbing your skin wrong. So make sure you're keeping an eye on everything and call us immediately if you have any questions. We're always available. Now after that two week zone, we start letting you exercise more. For the first two to four weeks, I really want you to lightly exercise, like walking as an exercise. At this point, it's not just walking around in the mall or walking around in your house. You can get out in the neighborhood and start to sweat. I don't want a lot of twisting or torsion movements for your upper um, torso. Otherwise, it'll cause, cause shearing forces to your abdominal wall and the muscles that are trying to heal. At about four weeks, we'll start letting you lightly jog, maybe 
uh, riding a stationary bike, being on an elliptical, but wait for that six to eight week zone before you start going back and doing more strenuous exercise. At six weeks from surgery, your body is 60% healed. At eight weeks, you're 80% healed. And then it takes the remainder of the year to get that last 20%. So really in that six to eight week zone is when we start letting you do more and more. Initially after surgery, we're also gonna want you to stay bent or flexed at the hip to take stress and strain off of the incision. As you know, we've removed quite a bit of skin and that skin will stretch out over time, but we take out the proper amount of skin so that when it stretches out, you still have a beautiful, normal, natural looking abdomen. We don't take so much that it looks too tight or tucked in, and you don't wanna to take too little to where you still have excess. So it will take time for your body to start to get to its final results, sometimes three to six months. By that time, you're exercising, you're eating healthy, and that's really when you're gonna see your best results. Thanks.